Hello folks and welcome. So I have another user request that was done about 60 days ago. I'm still going through my list of requests about videos and uh, this one here I think it's probably good for everyone to at least know about this. Whether you want to delve into that is a different animal. I'm going to talk about history, about your updater and your time shift. So something happens when you do an update and it breaks something. It happens occasionally, folks. What are your choices? How do you track down something like that? This person wanted to know that kind of information, so I'm gonna present that today. I'm gonna to talk about tracing down what's been updated, and also let's talk about what's been done when you do an actual system restore using time shift. So a little bit about logs and a little bit about practicality at the same time. I think everyone should be aware of this. And to the person that sent me that request, I know it was over 60 days ago and I do apologize. I have been going through some family health issues and hopefully you'll understand. I am filming in 1080. Welcome folks. So um, let me get this out of the way. Uh, so the green Linux Mint logo you can install rather easily through a configure. And uh, what am I using for a theme? I'm using a very dark theme and it's custom called Sweet Ambar Blue. Now you can see my videos on custom themes. And here's the rest of the, th most of these, uh, these three items you will have on your mint, not this one. All right, that, I'm not gonna make it about themes today, but I am gonna talk about time shift and this system updater. They have a relationship. Mary Tester is our user for today. It's just a made up name. All right, so I have some examples for you. So time shift is a system restore utility. It is used in case you have problems to restore systems from another time. This particular computer, I don't use uh, Linux Mint very often, so it's not consistent as far as time frames. You will even see a really old snapshot here from uh, Vanessa. But I wanted you to understand by clicking on these things, you do have VR sync logs for create because the system created that. And that's what this looks like. You can also sort this differently. All right, with that said, um, this is an rsync log viewer. It's a little different from this one. You can also see the path here if you want to toggle the entry. All right, so this has also a relationship with your updater, updater. So let's say you did an update and something broke. How do you find out what broke and what's a good idea for this? Well, first of all, let's go take a look at uh, what was changed. That would be the rsync part. Not really the update part, but what has been changed. It does have a sort of relationship if you want to think about that. We can also look at the um, information regarding what's been going on with your updater. And then we can also open this up and we can also look at history of updates. That's more important. So let me give you a, a scenario here. Let me make this box a little bit wider old and new version because there's a bunch of dots there. We can toggle the entries from the earliest date of your history file, in my case 7.1, so it goes back quite a few weeks, to um, 7.22. Now I'll pick a common theme. I know you can see Thunderbird in here and that's an email client. How about if we pick something common like a Brave web browser? It's going from 167 I'm sorry, 1.67.123 to a .134. So on the 17th of July, there was a change made. So if I was having problems with my browser, and uh, where is Brave? This one. Then I know there was a change done. Same thing with Google Chrome. I have that one installed also. I'm just giving you some examples. So on the 16th, something changed. So let's say Google Chrome is not performing for you and your backups have a backup of let's say the 15th. Just pretend you see the 15th in here. Then I can do a restore 
And since Linux Mint is being used 24 hours a day around planet Earth, it's usually reported back to the forums and then it makes it over to Clem's team. Clem is in charge of Linux Mint and his team is the one that usually does the fixes for a lot of stuff. Or he directs someone else to do that. So they can fix the problem and then provide you with an update later through the updater. Okay. So all that stuff plays together. So if your web browser broke on that day, then do a restore if you needed to get it running right away. And then wait until Clem and his team fixes the broken web browser, if that's the case. Then you can do your install updates then. But at least you have an option to go back in time. That's what time shift is all about. So I just wanted to let you see the logs that were created from Changed and the history of updates for your update manager. That's kind of important to, to look at. And that's why the user requested this video. How, what can I do when something gets broken through an update? Well, you can look at to see the history. You can view the package and the particular uh, software that you're looking for f by dates and you can sort them differently. Old version, new version. And you can make an appropriate choice of possibly doing a restore. There's many things you can do with time shift. You can also, if you're having some difficulty and uh, maybe it's preventing you from logging in for whatever reason because something broke during an update, then you can also put in your installation media of Linux Mint live and find time shift and do a restore from there. I'm not talking passwords here, folks. I'm talking about some piece of software that broke. Okay, a lot of people misunderstand when I say you can't log in, that it has to do, always has to do with passwords. That's not the case. I'm talking about something that prevented you from, uh, you know, the system from operating properly. You can always do that also through the live medium. The live medium doesn't require a password in here. When you uh, boot it up, you find time shift in your menu. It doesn't require a password, but it still scans your drive. You click a restore point. This thing is normally making five copies a week if you set the defaults to whatever hard drive that uh, you designated. I know you can see there's a ton of hard drives I have, and just don't pay any attention to that part. You don't, most of the time you just have a single hard drive. That's not important. It's the schedule. All right, and it's normally making five copies. And it's normally not making copies of your personal files. Our, our sync, um, sorry, time shift wasn't designed for that. However, you can activate that through here but it'd be enormous backups. I would uh, probably suggest that you watch some of my other videos to do personal backups. Whether you wanna use the backup utility here, and that one uses tar, tape archive, and it has no other options. It doesn't even have compressed tar. You can use your regular file manager to use tar and compressed tar and others like 7Z or even zip. You can also use GRSync or rsync with script files. There's all kinds of ways to back up your personal files. I'm talking about the system files today. Something happened with your updater, you need to restore until somebody fixes things. But I wanted to let you see the logs and more importantly where the file locations are and also the updater history files in case something breaks. That way you can look through this list and make your choice appropriately. Thank you for watching.